Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Cutworth. Um, I'm a quantity surveyor by profession, which means um, we're basically experienced in building costs, um, uh, cost management, that type of thing. Um, my role generally with body corporates is to prepare insurance estimates and the sinking funds and to cast the laptop when it slides off the selection. <laughs> You're right. Um, so my talk today really is on uh, regularly updating sinking funds and insurance estimates. It's not for example for a direction. Um, Okay, so why do we need to regularly update uh, our insurance, insurance estimates and sinking funds? Uh, well, the first major reason is it's compulsory. And it's compulsory because it's required by the Act. Insurance estimates have to be updated every five years um, and prepared by an independent person. Uh, sinking fund forecasts, the Act basically says that you have to have a forecast that is for the current year and at least the next nine years. Uh, you will find that when a quantity surveyor prepares a sinking fund forecast, it generally has a 15 year span, which means by the time it's five years old, you're down to the nine years, ten years life. So at that point, if you don't update it, you will actually then not be conforming with the Act because you will be have a forecast that's less than the time that's specified. So the first reason why you need to update is that it's compulsory to do that. The next reason that uh, you will need to do updating is when circumstances change. <coughs> Changes in circumstances we're looking at um, that you will get new building codes come out. An insurance estimate allows for replacing your building as new, but it also allows for when that building is replaced as new to incorporate any new codes that have come in since the building was built. I mean, we look at some buildings that might be 30 or 40 years old, so you, you find that the current balustrades say on building that old will not conform to the new codes. Um, so if that building was to be rebuilt, you build you would still build it the same, but you would have to incorporate the new balustrade code rather than rebuilding what you had previously. Um, changes in timing, this refers basically to sinking funds. Uh, when we prepare a sinking fund we basically have to take a bit of an estimate as to when things are likely to happen. Um, we will assume that painting will be probably a 12 year life, something like that. So you have a reasonable time frame on that. But there are other items that are in your sinking fund. You've got items of plant, um, maybe pumps, that sort of thing. To be quite honest, we've got no idea when that pump's going to break down. It, you have um, what you think is a reasonable life. You know, you, you have an idea that say a, a stormwater sump pump in a basement will probably last seven, eight years. So you, you would say, okay, when was this pump replaced? It was replaced two years ago. Okay, we'll allow a five year life. That pump could break down next year. Um, minor item probably doesn't affect the sinking fund that much, but you could also have something major that um, changes it. So you need to consider that you've spent that money up early you need to review your sinking fund on that basis. Um, unexpected expenditure, well that's basically a similar thing. Um, you know, something's broken down, somebody's driven into the um, garage door or something and it's not covered. You have to spend that money that you weren't expecting to spend. Um, an insured event, this is a similar thing. You, you have a big storm, um, the metal roof gets damaged, therefore it's got to be replaced. You're thinking from the probably allowed for some maintenance on that roof in 10 years time, you've now got a new roof. So there's no point in having that item still in your sinking fund because it won't need 
uh, any expenditures probably for 20 years. So again, you know, you, something else has happened. Review your sinking fund. And the last one, which is interesting, tax rate changes. All sinking funds allow for the fund to accrue interest in, in the bank. Uh, and also you have to pay the tax on that interest that's accrued. Now, we all know that interest rates are in the basket at the moment. Um, you'll find a lot of uh, sinking funds probably allow, if you go back five years, we might be looking at 4% interest. If you go back a couple of years, it might have been 3% interest. If you look at one now, it might be 2% interest. Um, you just need to keep an eye on that and just see that it's not actually getting too far out of kilter. Um, so that's Thank you, Michael. My lovely assistant, Michael. Um, okay. So the third reason is then escalation. And this is quite a cool one. Um, okay, so we, we're going to have a couple of changes. Um, for an escalation. Escalation, as you know, is the scourge of uh, forecasting. Um, everybody probably understands CPI, um, Consumer Price Index. Um, the government works off it, everybody works off it. You know, everything's gone up by CPI, blah, blah. Um, we actually work on building costs, and building costs don't necessarily run the same as CPI. Uh, they're more uh, affected by the market. So, uh, again, one of the reasons that you need to be considering both your sinking fund and your insurance estimate, because your insurance estimate, when it's calculated, will have an allowance for escalation. Um, an insurance fund, uh, sorry, the insurance estimate will be calculated forward to occur at a time which could be two years in advance. Um, you allow for something that may occur at the end of your insurance period, so that's your first 12 months. If an event was to occur at the end of your first 12 months, you've then got the time to get things organised, demolish the building, rebuild the building. Could be two and a half years period. So there's a forecast for escalation goes into that. And if escalation changes dramatically, then your insurance estimate is going to be out of kilter. Um, the other thing that happens is you only are required to do an insurance estimate every five years. So what happens in the interim, every time you get a renewal, your insurance company will probably say to you, we think you need to increase your insurance by 4%, 5% this year. And they charge you a premium accordingly. Um, you need to keep an eye on the building costs in line with what the insurers tell them you need to increase it by. Because again, of course, insurers have a bit of a vested interest in uh, increasing it, probably more than they need to at some time. Okay. Um, this is a table of uh, escalation over the last uh, about 11 years. And you can see back in 2004, um, escalation was 11.5% per annum. That was the glory times. That's when we were all making big money in the building. Um, and then there's a steady decline down through the next three or four years. Then we get to 2009, when we had the GFC. And for the next two years, uh, escalation was in fact negative. Um, so we then had um, three to, well probably four to five percent negative escalation. And then from 2011 onwards, we had a couple of years that were pretty flat, less than one percent. And the last two years, we're, we're sort of now tracking around three and a half to four percent. So we're, we're back to the four percent average. Um, four percent was generally considered to be the overall norm for escalation, but 
as you can see from there, in the last 10 years, it's gone on and down like a yo-yo. So this is a graph uh, which shows both the CPI, um, <coughs> building, the building price index is what we call it, which we use for escalation. So as you can see, CPI, which is the red line, is quite steady. The blue line is the building cost or building price index. So this is the period here um, where building prices sort of rocketed, then they dropped and back up again. Back in the early days, in the old days, um, building costs were actually less than CPI for a while. Now, this is where the, the trick comes. Um, we'll just go back one. Get back. Yeah. If I had been preparing an insurance estimate on a stingy fund uh, back here, 2007, I'd probably been allowing 5% escalation because I, I didn't know the GFC was coming. So I would have done insurance estimate and I said, okay, you know, it's tracking at 5 6%. We need to allow at least 5% future escalation. What happened was then we had three or four years where it was hardly anything. My estimate is now two or three years old. And it's still got a 5% escalation. But in reality, what's happening is the escalation has gone down. So this is why I think it's important. This, this index this is available from the Bureau of Statistics. Everybody can get it. You just log on, chase it up. And you can see exactly what the Bureau thinks building costs are doing. Um, you can sort of keep a bit of a track if you've got an insurance estimate or a single fund that's using a rate of escalation and you find that you're getting out of kilter with it, then you need to be considering an update at some point in time. So, why, why do we need to do the updates? Well, first of all, we want to avoid over insurance um, because that way you pay high premiums. But of course, the consequences of life that if somebody's done an insurance estimate in the GFC, when insurance rates and escalation is quite low, you also want to be sure that you're not going to lose out because somebody's used a 2% rate or something, thinking that that's how things are going to be. So you, again, you don't want to be underinsured either. So it's quite important that five years is a long time in uh, forecasting. I mean, if, if you look at any federal budget, they're lucky if they can get it right from year to year. So uh, the same applies to building. I mean, we, we all think we know what's going to happen. Um, and we all think that everything will carry on as it's carrying on. But uh, I've been on, uh, I work on the Gold Coast basically, and I've been there for 32 years. And I've seen that things don't carry on as we think they're going to carry on on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, it just pays to keep in touch, I think. Keep an eye on what's on it. That's it. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. What contingency do you use? For an uh, insurance estimate? Yeah. Uh, usually somewhere between 2.5 and 5%. It, it really depends on the building. Um, That's on top, of, on top of the valuation. No, no, that's included in the valuation. Well, the way we prepare uh, uh, insurance valuations, we, we do uh, a quite detailed estimate of the construction of that building. Um, I mean, I've, I've worked on all the high rise, well, probably half the high rises that were built on the coast, for instance, for 25 years. So I, I know basically what building costs are for each building. So I, I can work out um, what I think it will cost. I mean, we work on new buildings as well, so we, we get feedback from builders as to how much buildings are costing. So generally, you work it out in quite a bit of detail, and then you would allow something like two and a half to five percent. It, it would also depend on the quality of the information you've got. You know that sometimes we don't get really good plans, for instance. You know, you've got to measure areas, you've got to measure various things. 
So it would also depend on you know the degree of detail that's available to actually prepare the estimate. If you're doing it on a bunch of separated townhouses, so not adjoining, yeah. would you do it on the total cost of replacing the whole complex, <coughs> or? Yeah, it's done. It's done on the whole complex. Yes, yeah, it's it's, it's a total that's cost. That's unlikely. Oh, it's, it's absolutely unlikely. It's it's absolutely unlikely that a twenty-story high-rise is going to collapse and fall down overnight. But that's what the insurers take into account. We, we have to tell them what the total cost is to rebuild this development, whatever it is. They then will, their actuaries will then assess what they think the risk is, and they work out the premium on that basis. So we give them a bit of description of what the property is. Um, I mean, as you've seen, there's probably been a couple of fires in high rises, and probably only a couple over the last few years. But the extent of the damage from that fire is probably one unit and a bit of smoke damage and whatever. So they don't, they obviously don't say, okay, we've got to allow to replace this building in total every year. They say, okay, this is a hundred million dollar building. What's the likelihood of how much we will have to spend if, if there's an issue on this building? And uh, because we've got excellent fire services, because Michael is an iron mill, um, it's not going to be a problem, General. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you very much.